All right, it's 12.15 on the dot, always on time, just like my judge days. So, um, <laughs> Don't make me feel nervous. I'm making you feel nervous. <laughs> so hello. 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 All right. Uh, so I'm Derek Mosley. I am the director of Marquette Law School's Lubar Center. Um, and I want to welcome you to our first Get to Know for the 2024 season. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Get to Know series, because it's new, something I, I brought when I came on, on board. Uh, when I was growing up in Chicago, south side of Chicago, there was a, um, a pretty prominent African-American newscaster by the name of Harry Porterfield. Um, and actually, Harry's granddaughter uh, is um, Amanda Porterfield at Channel 58 here in Milwaukee. And so uh, Harry used to do these things once a week called Someone You Should Know. And I used to watch those every week, and it would put me in contact with people that I would never have contact with or, or find out what they do, how they affect my life. And I, I loved it. And so when I came here to the Lubar Center, um, Harry passed away last year. And so as my kind of gift, uh, kind of a, his legacy, I started this Get to Know program where I wanted to bring people in, not only locally, but also nationally, to just to get to know who they are and what they do to affect our lives every day. So I'm excited today because I get to talk about my favorite subject, which is Milwaukee, with one of my favorite people. Uh, but I want to set the stage a little bit for you if I could. Um, so visit Milwaukee, which is going to be the topic uh, for most of what we're going to be talking about. Visit Milwaukee is the organization which is solely responsible for the marketing of the city of Milwaukee, not only nationally, but also internationally. And you're probably aware of that or see that through uh, the RNC, which is coming in July, 166 days, by the way. Um, I looked on your website. So, um, and so what I love about Visit Milwaukee and what they do is, so like an event like the RNC, is scheduled to bring in over $200 million for bars, restaurants, and hotels here in the city of Milwaukee. Now, tourism is a big part of Milwaukee. I don't, I'm not sure if everybody knows how big of a part it is. Um, tourism actually supports over 43,000 jobs, full-time jobs here in the city of Milwaukee, and is responsible for over $5 billion into our community. And the woman who is responsible for all of that is our guest today. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you President and CEO of Visit Milwaukee, Peggy Williams-Smith. Thank you, thank you. You're hired, by the way. Oh, thanks. You had all of those facts without even them. looking at your notes. I, I am a lawyer. I did my due diligence. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, I think it's important, I also should mention this. Um, not only is she the President and CEO of Visit Milwaukee, but she's the first female President and CEO of Visit Milwaukee. And, and here, Here's how important that is. This is an organization which actually dates back to about 1888. It had a, a different name. It was like the Association of Advancement of Milwaukee and then the Greater Milwaukee Convention and a Visitors Bureau, and now its current iteration as Visit Milwaukee. So that's quite an accomplishment. So congratulations, my friend. Well, thank you very much. So we have a lot to talk about. We do. And not a whole lot of time. So I want to start, let's just start with you for a second. Right. Sure. So, born in the and raised in the Milwaukee area. Yes. Educated uh, in Milwaukee as well. Yes. Right. And not at Marquette. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I didn't mention it, but you mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, but service has been really important in your life, and it's not just the job you had now. I mean, from the very beginning. From so let's talk about beginning. the very beginning. The well, first the very job. Very beginning. If you go back to my first job, it was babysitting. I was in sixth grade. And one of the neighbors had twin girls who were in first grade and a fifth grader. And they didn't think the fifth grader was responsible enough. So I would get picked up at 5.30 a.m., go to their house, feed them breakfast. It was cereal. I can't cook. I still can't cook to this day. Well, that goes one of my questions. <laughs> and then I would walk them. I would walk them to school every morning. So that was my sixth grade year. I think I made like 300 bucks. I spent it as fast as I got it because that's what I do. I wasn't gambling back then for anyone who knows me, but um, I did spend it as fast. And then my first, my first official W-2 job was um, Arby's at Southridge. Oh. Yes. Wow. 1986. I was the 1987 Employee of the Year oh, for the whole organization. That's true. That's it was a very proud accomplishment <laughs> for me. I still have the pin. So how did you get from 
Walgreens, I thought you worked at Muskego Country Club? I did, Club? Muskego Lakes Country yeah. Club. That is where I was from 1990 to 1997. Um, I, was, I started as a bartender and I worked my way up to banquet manager before deciding that I no longer wanted to be in the hospitality business. It was nights and it was weekends. People don't get married on a Tuesday very often, except because of COVID. And I thought, you know what? I want to have nights and weekends. So I left there in August of 97, mm -hmm. worked in another job for about three months, was so bored, I picked up two bartending jobs, and then got a call from a headhunter to come work for Marcus Hotels and Resorts at the Hilton. Mm -hmm. So it brings you, to Mar brings you to Marcus, yes. the Marcus Corporation, where you were there for quite a, an amount of time. Over two decades, 22 years. 22 years. Mm -hmm. And at Marcus, you did pretty much everything. I did. I mean, I so started. So let's run through it. Yeah. So, so I started by doing weddings. I know that we've got married in Milwaukee in the house. Woo woo. And I did someone's <laughs> wedding that's here. I did Jeannie's wedding to no offense, Roy. And and I do. I mean, there's people I still see to this day that I and can I did remember. And I sister's wedding. Oh my goodness. This all <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't officially marry them. Oh. Oh. No. Okay. No. I Sorry. planned the party that went along with the marriage. Oh, okay. That gotcha. was my job. Gotcha. So I did weddings for about a year and a half. Then I started doing convention. As a matter of fact. In 1998, when I moved over to conventions, was when we were opening the um, Wisconsin Center, then the Midwest Express, Express Center, yeah. in 1998. And I was part of the planning team that helped to put on that gala because a lot of the rooms were staying at the Hilton at that point. Okay. And then I was a director at the Hilton. Then I moved to the Fister. From the Fister, I went to Brynwood Country Club where I was the general manager. That was the precursor to now the Wisconsin Country Club. I was there for two years. Being a country club general manager is absolutely the worst job in the entire world. I would never do <laughs> why? it again. Tell us why. No matter how much, you, you have 1,200 to 3,500 bosses. And it's, you know, if you're a people pleaser, yeah. which I am yeah. by nature, you're never done pleasing people. It was just, it was, it was rewarding. I got to know people that I probably would have never known, but it was, 18 hours a day, seven days a week, and it was just the, I mean, I give anyone who does it complete credit because it is a tough, tough job. Now, from there you decide, well, I'm going to make this jump. There's an opening at Visit Milwaukee, and I'm going to go over to Visit Milwaukee. And so you make that move. Yes. Tell me what year you made that move. I made that move in November of 2019. Okay, so mm -hmm. 2019, yes. December comes around, January 2020. It's the year of Milwaukee. We're hosting the DNC. Got the DNC. We're hosting the National Guard. Yeah. We've got we're hosting Moose International, over 12,000 rooms on peak. We are set and ready, locked and loaded. We were just called Vogue's sexiest city by or yeah, the, the sexiest Midwestern city by Vogue. I was like, this is going to be easy streets for me. Right, mm -hmm. and then. What? Did something happen? <laughs> and then everything kind of fell apart. It did. It fell apart. All right. So, so the pandemic starts, right? And so you are an organization which is responsible for hospitality, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and hospitality grinds to a halt. To a halt. Yeah. So how do you navigate that? But, but before I ask, ask you that, I saw this an amazing interview about your husband, Tim. Mm -hmm. And how he like recorded a video of you during COVID where you're saying that, oh, we're going to be all back up and running again <laughs> and everything's going to be great. And then I go a day later, he records a video of you saying, yeah, well, we're closing for a period of time. So how did you navigate all of that? Well, it started with interviews, right? I started immediately. People wanted to know what was happening in Milwaukee. When, th when things started to close down around the country, around the world, um, I was on every news station. There's no COVID in Milwaukee. Milwaukee is open for business. We are open for business. There is no COVID. I refuse to let anyone on the team say the word pandemic. If they said pandemic, they got a timeout. <laughs> and then uh, I would say about halfway through that week, I was on a call from industry, my industry peers throughout the country. And one of them said that San Francisco had just declared a state of emergency. And I was having dinner that night for a fundraiser with our then mayor, Tom Barrett. And I just was making small talk and I said, you know, as a matter of fact, San Francisco um, just declared a state of emergency. And he's like, that's so they can get federal funds. 
That's his, that's his first response. The next day he declared a state of emergency. <laughs> I blame myself for that. The governor then called me and said, stop saying you're open for business. You're not open for business. It wasn't the actual governor, it was someone from his office. So the next day I was on saying, Milwaukee is closed for business, we need to be safe. <laughs> My husband records everything I do on TV so that when he has a few drinks, he can play it back to me and make fun of me. <laughs> So that's what he was doing in that montage of we're open, we're closed, we're open, we're closed. But that's tough to navigate, right? So all these big events are coming to Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. You're all set to, to tee them all up and then everything grinds to a halt. It did. So before we go any further there, tell us exactly in your own words what Visit Milwaukee does. Well, we create economic impact through travel and tourism. That is what we do. That is our entire job. We brand the city. We talk about the city. My team attends over 60 trade shows every single year. We come up with new and innovative ways to talk to different types of customers, whether they be leisure customers, meeting and convention customers, just, I mean, we talk to media all the time, influencers, so that people are talking about Milwaukee in a positive light. Um, you know, we don't sell anything. We don't make anything. We don't, we don't have assets. You are all our assets. And I think that the turnaround point for our city happened when all of you started talking about the good things that were happening in the city. And that really, you know, for all the bad that the pandemic brought to the world, for us, it was a chance for us to reflect on what it is we do and how we make Milwaukee, how we tell the story of Milwaukeeans who are making Milwaukeeans a better place. And that is absolutely what we've done for the last four years since that's happened. I remember sitting in the office by myself with a script that was written by Claire, who's here in the back, talking about, oh, I'll start to tear up a little because it was talking about the good things brewing in Milwaukee because everything was closing. And we had gone out and we had talked to people who, were, who had changed their you know, liquor distillery into making hand sanitizer and all of those different things. And we were able to help share those stories First, through weekly webinars, which my team absolutely hated me for, because it's a lot of work to put on a weekly show every week. Um, we didn't stop doing it for two years. I think I may have lost some people because of that. Josh came in, he's like, Peggy, I think really we need to stop. Stop <laughs> now, Josh is also here, so we did. We now do a monthly webinar, but it was, it was our way to communicate, have people on, and tell everyone what was happening in the city. And it was to the hospitality community. Because we had the MMAC who was doing it mm -hmm. on a much bigger scale. They have a much bigger membership. But we had the hospitality community who was affected much differently than a lot of places. They were closed down. They couldn't have people in. These are small businesses. We have over 200 independently and owned and operated restaurants in the city of Milwaukee. And I'm not talking, you know, your big chains or your fast food chains. We have not very many big chains. So when you look at how this affected people, it didn't just affect a business, a nameless, faceless corporation. It affected people. You are a food influencer, you yeah. know. It affected people you knew. And we wanted to be on the front end of helping them to be able to recover. That's awesome. So I, I got off your website, five, over $5 billion in revenue coming back to the community. Mm -hmm. In the grand scheme of Wisconsin, where does Milwaukee, are we the number one driver of tourism here in the state of Wisconsin? We are. Okay. And tourism is the third largest driver of the economy in the state of Wisconsin. Who are the other two? Uh, manufacturing. Oh, I was giving you a quiz. Good. And, and healthcare, right? It's healthcare. Yeah, healthcare. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> mm -hmm. So the three. So in the top three is we are. tourism. And tourism is... It's many different things. It takes on many different forms. Not all tourists are overnight tourists. For our organization, we're funded through overnight tourists, so we do place a heavy emphasis on sure. that. But there are people who come in. They may go to three museums. We just finished museum days. They're, they may go to three museums and then drive back home. They're spending money on admission tickets, probably going to lunch, maybe taking, you know, stopping at a, a, at a boutique, taking home a, a top or a gift for their grandkids. All of those things count as tourism. When we talk about the impact of RNC, we talk about the 
regular things that you would think. Yes, they're going to eat, they're going to drink, they're going to stay in hotels, they're going to meet in specific, specific places. They're also going to print things. They're also going to use transportation. They're also going to use so many other businesses. You know, they may need a dentist. People ask us all the time, why would a dentist be a partner of Visit Milwaukee? Because people break their tooth when they're at a convention or on vacation and they need someone to go to. So all of those things can be counted. They don't count in that 5.6, sure. I'm working on that, but it does count in, you know, for economic impact that happens here in the city and the region. Yeah, so we did an event for Museum Days. I know you did, um, thank you. And you've been here. a very good yep. influencer a, for us. I yes. enjoy Museum mm -hmm. Days. Um, and I just a little quick Museum Days shout out. I did Museum Days this weekend. So uh, me and my family went to the Milwaukee Art Museum and then we went to the Haggerty Museum of Art here on Marquette's campus. There's a Bill Tennyson exhibit of photographs from about the 80s and 90s in Milwaukee. If you've not been there, please, please go check it out. It just gives you this picture of Milwaukee from like the tragedy to the, the, the jubilance and just things you don't see every day about Milwaukee. So please check that out. That's a side note. So Amelia Layden, if you're listening, <laughs> give a shout out to Amelia. Um, so you mentioned that you, you go to trade shows. All right, so this is just for my own personal edification. I sit at home and I watch TV and I see pure Michigan commercials and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Are, are people sitting in Michigan seeing Milwaukee, great place by Great Lake, or whatever our motto is, or do we not do that? Unfortunately, our budget is not quite as big as Michigan's budget is. Yeah, sure. They do place a little higher emphasis on the outlay of money towards tourism. Um, and same when you see Orlando or Florida, all of those places. Interesting, I'll give you an example. $15 million was just cut from Visit Orlando's budget. I don't even have a budget of $15 million. Their budget was 85 or 100, it's going down to 85. Um, so we are funded through room tax dollars. So that means when you stay at a hotel, you get a specific tax added onto that hotel, not the 5.9 or the 7.9 that we see now. This is an additional room tax of 7% plus a county percentage. That goes back to the Wisconsin Center District, which was formed in 1994 to um, help build the convention center. The city used to own it, it fell into disrepair. The leaders of the city thought, you know what, if we make it, if we privatize it, quasi-governmental, mm -hmm. we might be able to make sure that we are a leader in tourism moving into the future. They were absolutely right. So that's how, and then we get funded through a separate contract with the, the Wisconsin Center District. So our budget ranges anywhere from the year I was starting because our our budget is based off prior year tax revenues. So 2020 was the highest revenue year the organization had seen until this year at 10.9 million. This year we're a little, or 23, we're a little over 11 million and we'll be a little on, you know, higher in the 11 millions for this upcoming year. Okay. So that doesn't, commercials are expensive. We did do commercials during the um, playoffs in 2021. We had gotten a grant from the state with some ARPA funding, and we used that to create two commercials, what we thought we would be able to air during the DNC, and we all know that didn't happen, so we weren't able to air those commercials. So we got an opportunity to do it during the playoffs. So we aired commercials in five states and during, and so you didn't see it here, but everywhere else they saw Visit Milwaukee. But you did get the message out, because there was, a, you go onto the website, and I was fortunate to be a part of it, The the Good Things Brewing in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Could you describe what Good Things Brewing yeah, is all about? Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, during the pandemic, we started, we coined the phrase Good Things Brewing, that there's still good things brewing. Um, we got an opportunity brought to us um, right after Josh had started to create our own TV show with um, Plum Media, a local media company, as well as David Caruso. Marquette grads. Yes, you may yeah. know David Caruso. He um, he is an event planner and so much more. And they came awesome with a plan of what we were looking at to do for Good Things Brewing. Mm -hmm. And what we wanted to do is find an authentic way to market our city outside of the city using authentic Milwaukeeans and telling their story of Milwaukee. So the judge here was featured on season one um, oh, of, of our TV show. It aired in 15 different markets, um, all drive markets. And the thing that we saw directly was that some of those markets who never showed up in the top 10 
of drivers of tourism to Milwaukee are now showing up in that top 10. Wow. I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not only, so it was, it was a great show. It was fun to tape. It was fun to watch. And it was nominated for an Emmy. It was. Yeah. It was. We did not win. Yeah. We did not win much to David's chagrin. But I can now say that I'm an Emmy nominated producer. <laughs> but it was so successful that there's a season two. From there is a season two also featuring someone from Marquette, the owner of Pete's Pops. Pete yeah. is featured. He's doing a whole thing on the campus here at Marquette. And then he plays, I have only seen one episode so far. They. They, my team only feeds me very little bits of information at a time, so I don't offer feedback. Um, <laughs> so I did see this episode, and I will tell you, if you see the fire chief, just tell the fire chief he should keep his day job. He tried to play a game of pickup basketball, and it was oh, absolutely he's, painful he's, he's to horrible. watch. Yeah, he's, he's horrible. <laughs> he's horrible. <laughs> he's horrible. So, um, yeah, which, which was an interesting thing, because I didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. I get a call from David, and David's like, I have a TV show. And I just want you to take me to your favorite restaurants and things you like to do in Milwaukee. So I'm like, okay. And then I show up and there's like this huge like production crew yeah. there. I'm like, I wish mm -hmm. you would give me a little heads up. But it was, um, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was great. So even though you're not doing those, uh, have the money to do the big ads in Correct. other states, yes. that was a way that you and can get the And this is work. a way, it's, it, is, it is definitely a commercial. Um, it's, it tells you when it comes on, it's paid advertising. We get yep. the full half an hour. There's an opportunity for us to play our commercials. And those so commercials are amazing. They are amazing. If you haven't seen them, please visit, uh, visit Milwaukee.org and click the uh, Good Things Brewing tab. They have all the set, all the seasons. Season five is the best, or episode five is the best. <laughs> but you could see all the episodes. But during those episodes, they have commercials, and those commercials. I, I, I was sitting there watching. So I had, you know, family was over. We were watching when mm -hmm. that when it aired, and everyone was looking at the commercials like, "Is that Milwaukee?" I, I mean, know. They were, whoever you don't, it, it I know. was. It was brilliant. They were brilliant. It is so I'm brilliant. happy to hear there's a season two. Mm -hmm. and I think the rollout's coming out soon. Yes, February 21st is our premiere party. And um, then it will start to air in markets. It airs on Channel 4 here, I believe, at 6.30 um, it's the following week okay. on Saturday night, right? Yes. It's good to have this. I know. I'm just looking at Josh <laughs> like, am I right? Yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the other uh, participants of that first season of Good Things Brewing was Noel Alvarado. Yes. And the reason why I'm bringing up Noel, because he's, he's an artist here from the city of Milwaukee, but he had a small part in helping bring the RNC here to Milwaukee. Um, I, I think we're not allowed to say the name of the shoe anymore. Oh, we, well, we, so we changed the name of the shoe. Okay. So we like to, you know, part of what we've done with Visit Milwaukee, like I said, we attend 57, 60 trade shows, sales missions each year. And because we know, we, we want tourism to extend beyond the traditional tourism zones in Milwaukee, but that's not always possible, right? Someone who's coming in for a convention, doesn't have a car, only has one night out, they may not make it to Bronzeville, they not, may not make it to the south side. But we are finding ways to include those neighborhoods that aren't typically thought of as tourism neighborhoods in what we're doing. So what we did was we worked with Noel Alvarado to create what we called at first, what, what's, no, no. It, was, it was called Air, uh, Cheese Force Ones. Cheese Force Ones, yeah. thank you. I, I was told <laughs> I couldn't call them that anymore. So, the, so he takes, he, did, he was a, a shoe designer and he did the shoes for the Bucks and he did um, cheese shoes for us. The swoosh was made out of cheese with, I mean, painted like cheese, not actually made out of cheese. That would smell after a while on a trade show floor. And, um, and I have to tell you, they were such a hit that there is no such thing as a, a good first idea. We took the idea from someone else who didn't do it as cool as we did. We did it cool on the trade show floor, and everyone asked, and he has been hired now by three three or four different destinations to do shoes for them and paint them on the floor. So he's getting paid to fly to trade shows. He gets paid to do each set of tennis shoes and that's how we create economic impact. But he did it for RNC as well, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, um, they're for sale on your website. They are for sale. Visit Milwaukee.org. You can go there and pick up a pair of your no longer cheese, what you, you changed them to a different name. Cream uh, City Kicks. Cream City Kicks, yes. So pick up your Cream City Kicks on yeah. their website. All right, so let's talk about the RNC. How did, how did we get it? I mean, it's kind of hard when you, when you look at it. We just had the DNC, mm -hmm. it didn't come through. 
and then the next convention cycle, we get the RNC. All right, so tell me what VISIT had to do with that process. So we received an RFP in September of 2021 for the RNC. As you know, there was a lot of news articles about how the DNC should give us a redo. It's just not the way it works. Just so you know, we never got an RFP for the 2024 Democratic National Convention. So I got the RFP. I call, it's, it's to, um, actually not even to me, it was to my predecessor, but it was also CC'd to the mayor. So I called the mayor's office and I said, we've got this bid. Do you want us to put in for it? Because although we can work all the magic with what we give them for razzle and dazzle, the city has to make a, a significant commitment yes. to go after grants and to, to do all of those things. So he said, absolutely. During my entire time of being the chair of the DNC, I said I would do it regardless of which party it was. This isn't about red or blue, it's about green. So we put forth the bid. Um, as the RNC tells me now, it was the longest bid they've ever gotten. It was 254 pages. Wow. Most people just sent you know, a little packet about their city. <laughs> we had all of our information from the DNC, so we sent it all. Search and replace, RNC, DNC, just kidding. We had, to change, we had to change a little bit of the stuff that was involved in there, let's be realistic. Um, so we, we put it in and then they sent us a note and said, we're having an all cities meeting. Can you come out to Washington DC and learn more about it? And I said, absolutely. I, um, by that point, had talked to one of my board members who um, is, a, is a Republican, and he's like, I will help you to do this. I'll fly out there with you. His name is Gerard Randall. He's been here forever. And he, um, so we, we're gonna fly out there together. At the same time, our, our mayor, our former mayor, was getting a little bit of a promotion, but it wasn't yet announced. So he was in Washington, D.C., learning about his new job, and he said, I will swing by. So, as we got closer, it turned into this is not a learn about us. This is a we need to learn about you, so you need a presentation. Now, mind you, I started in November of 2019. I went to exactly one show. The world shut down, and I have not yet been to another trade show on behalf of Visit Milwaukee. And now I'm going by myself, and I have to sell the city, and it's been closed for a year and a half. We scramble. We put together a PowerPoint. We walk in, there's Houston, there's Oklahoma City. They come with a contingent, their governor. They all have these gifts. I walked in with some sheets of paper and a PowerPoint. I was talking to my counterpart in Houston, and I'm like, what do you have there? He's like, well, we brought gifts for everyone. I'm like, oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> so we go in, the mayor talks. He talks, he talks about it being green, that he's a Democratic mayor, that he will open our doors wide open for this event. I get up and talk. I talk about Milwaukee. And then I say, and just so you know, I didn't bring the gifts with you because they, they were too large, but they're being mailed as we speak <laughs> to your office. <laughs> Little white lie. <laughs> They were much better gifts than everyone else brought, and I think that that helped us to win it. <laughs> were you wearing Cream City kicks? I was okay. not. I don't think we had them at this point. We did not have them at this point. We didn't get those until 22. What was the gift? Cream we did. So we did cheese. We did well, and that's the thing. Not we weren't doing a whole lot of research. Everything we did involved coffee, or the Brew City coffee or beer, mm -hmm. cheese. Um, we used a lot of Central Crafts. Uh, standard distillery to put together packages. We gave homemade, um, you know, custom made glasses that said RNC. And Ronna McDaniel, who's the chair, is Mormon and she doesn't drink coffee or alcohol. <laughs> and we still won. And you still got it. <laughs> must tell you a must, lot about the city. That must tell you a lot about that cheese. Yes. <laughs> so um, now, are you still looking for volunteers? It's 166 days away. It is, and if, we're looking for volunteers. If well, anyone the hears, host committee is yep. looking for volunteers, and this is volunteering, nothing political. The convention show floor will be managed by paid people and, and interns that come in from all over the country. This is you know, giving friendly advice about where they can go to eat, what they can do during their spare time, talking about the city, all of those things. And we need volunteers all the time, as I just mentioned earlier, for Visit Milwaukee. So any, if anyone wants 
a fun job. Our volunteers love volunteering. They love talking to people. They love getting to tell their favorite things about Milwaukee to visitors. But they're, like you said, they're essentially ambassadors. They are. Right? It's ambassadors. I mean, they're not mm -hmm. doing anything with the convention itself, but they're saying if right. you want to eat here, go there. Exactly. And so if someone wants to do that, what's the best way for them to sign up to become an ambassador? There is ambassador? a volunteer portal on mkehost2024.org. And that is where you can go, put your name in, and they'll start reaching out to volunteers um, probably sometime in mid-April, I would say. You told an interesting story. That I, you probably don't know that I knew this, but um, you were talking about other, I think it was Nashville maybe, mm -hmm. but there were other cities who were putting their pitch on for the RNC, and they were getting like negative about Milwaukee. Like, it was cold or it was you know. it was yes so yeah. when so we did so that was we didn't win the convention after that one pitch so um, we in February of 2022 went down we did a first did a site tour here which was so many different people throughout our community who were instrumental in making it happen. Paul Bartolotta did a wonderful dinner. The mayor was now Cavalier Johnson. He was fantastic. The fire chief, the police chief, everyone came together to talk about how we could put this on and how we could pull this off. And then we went to Salt Lake City to pitch in front of the entire delegation, 168 delegates of the RN, uh, or members of the um, RNC. And we didn't talk about the other cities. We just talked about everything that Milwaukee had to offer. Huge screen, about as big as the wall behind me, showcasing flying in over Milwaukee, over Lake Michigan, into the city, the wings of the Calatrava open, you name it. And the other cities focused on bashing us and talked about the negatives that it would be, not that it would be cold, obviously, because the convention would take place in the summer, but how cold it is and, and the negatives. And you know, I think that they went low, we went high, the we result is here, yes. Yeah, perfect, mm -hmm. perfect. So we talked about a lot of the things that uh, Visit Milwaukee does, but I don't think, at least I didn't know, how many people are actually employed by Visit Milwaukee? We're almost back to 40. So we were at 50 prior to the pandemic. We went down to 24, and now we're working our way back up. To 40, mm -hmm. perfect. And so that group, that mighty 40, yes. um, puts out amazing content. I know you mentioned Josh a couple of times. Josh has... Like as Josh and Josh little thing. Josh going on. and around a podcast. Yeah, it's yes. amazing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's amazing. So please check out visitmilwaukee.org. Um, but you did a video or videos with Bobby Portis. Yes. Which, if you haven't seen these videos, please take the time to watch these videos. He's hysterical, first of all. He is, and but our team writes a lot of this content. It's oh, really. So the it's, team's hysterical. It's really, it's oh. really the team. It, 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 the team is hysterical. They wanted to do this. You know, the partnership with Bobby Portis is interesting, and it shows um, that you can make the wrong decision and and have people who fight for it, and then it works out for the positive. You know, um, it's coming out of the pandemic. I think I was a little more conservative than I probably should have been in terms of the money we were spending. It was my first time leading an organization. We went from all this money to no money. And every time we were spending money, I was signing every check, right? Like every single check that goes out or every expense, I approve. And as my husband will tell you, I'm not very good at my own checkbook. I can't believe they put you in, some, in charge of someone else's. So I, I, I was, it was a huge investment, and I was not sure that Bobby was the right person. I think Bobby's great. I think everyone in Milwaukee loves him. He's definitely Milwaukee's sixth, sixth man. He's our hype man. But I wasn't sure that investing the money in that partnership was smart. I went home. I watched Sports Center. I didn't see him covered. I'm like, I think we should have Giannis. And Josh said, well, that's going to cost you a lot more than this is, so I don't think that's going to happen. So I, I said, I'm just not sure. And he's like, we should do it. And we did do it. And it has brought, you know, it tests well with meeting planners who don't even know who he is because of the way that we feature him in the content that we're showing. So I think that it's, it's the team that does it. Claire and Josh's team are amazing. They spend a lot of time making sure that we're showcasing Milwaukee in the best possible light. As witnessed, if you're not following us on TikTok or Instagram Reels, you need to. They are hilarious. Um, and the Bobby Portis video, this most recent one, 
I've gotten notice, notes from people all over the country saying this is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Well done. Well yeah. done. So I, um, <clears throat> I get Nat Geo online, and one of the craziest things ever is I'm sitting at the computer. I, I was on my phone. It's on my phone. I'm going through Nat Geo, and it's like, these are the most amazing places that you should visit in 2023. And I'm going through them like, oh, Peru. Okay, cool. And Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. Milwaukee. I Milwaukee know. popped up. Tell me about the Nat Geo Best Place to Travel in 2023 award. So I think that people don't realize how often we have travel writers in. And Claire, who's in charge of comms, had met with this travel writer. And this, it, it, he didn't come to write a story on Milwaukee. He came because he was doing a book. And sometimes you, as they explained to me, you have to play the long game. So she went, and it was obviously during the pandemic, but it was during the playoffs when the Bucks were won the world championship in 2021. And she took an entire day showing him everything in Milwaukee. America's Black Holocaust Museum before it was even open, like was able to showcase the diversity and the culture throughout the city. And then, um, you know, you forget about it. He's writing a book, not, nothing's gonna come out of it. Well, he got invite, invited to pitch for National Geographic. My husband hates Nat Geo because we would all say it and he would listen sometimes on conference calls like, Nat Geo. Um, so that whenever someone says it, I'm, he would be like, Nat Geo. Um, but it was, it, it was, Claire came to me, I want to say in August and she's like, I think we're going to be in the top 25. And I said, and, but they typically don't tell me things because I don't. I'm not very good at keeping secrets when it's good news about Milwaukee, at all. Um, they're probably praying right now I don't announce something huge. <laughs> but um, but it was. She said it, and then I put it out of my head. Like I'm. I, I don't. You know. First of all, I don't know how impactful this is going to be because we had never been on it, and it was. I mean, we were one of three places in the United States that year. This year, I think there's like seven places from the United States on it. And it was just amazing to see. And the amount of attention that gives you of free media is beyond anything you can possibly imagine. And there's something new. I also saw the third best big city. Yeah, big city. Yeah. We're the 32nd largest city, and people don't think of us as a big city. It's ridiculous. Now, the goal for the organization is to get to number one eventually. So Chicago and San Diego are one and two, and we're number three. But that's, and that's Condé Nast Traveler. So that gives us something else to promote throughout this year. You only get to promote it for the year you're in it because then you have to take that little sticker and give it to someone else. So our goal is to keep the sticker for another year on that one. That's great. That's amazing. So um, <clears throat> conferences. How many conferences come through Milwaukee during the course of a year? So I can speak to how many conferences that we touch. Yes, into. please. So there's, because we have many hotels throughout the region that book their own conferences that may not ever use Visit Milwaukee. We hope that they use us because we can help to enhance what they're doing through our event experience team. But this year alone, we booked over 500 groups for the future. Wow. So when you look at that, it's over... Um, $600 million in economic impact, not including the RNC. So we didn't, in our booking numbers for this year, we didn't include the RNC. It's an outlier. It's a one-off. Mm -hmm. We don't want to live against it or count it towards our goals. So we've just taken that and put it off to the side, which would mean that we've created $800 million for the future just this year and what we've booked. And that's wow. talking to groups from any size. It could be a class reunion of 10 people who want a room block that we're putting in touch with a hotel, or it could be an event that's already booked and they call us because they need gift bags or they want um, to know where to go and they want what you have on the tables, our official visitors guides or our maps. All of those things we provide for incoming visitors when someone gives us a call. Um, we do welcome signage. We're in the airport. We're in the Baird Center. We also have a mobile kiosk that moves around the city that explains tourism and then also promotes all of our partners. We are a 501c6. We're a partner-based organization. So people pay to be a part of Visit Milwaukee. That gives us a little leverage to get to know the people who we represent a little bit better so we can talk about them when we're out on the road. And that happens all the time. You know, I was at a site tour the last two days, lunch on 
Monday and lunch on, is today Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Lunch on Friday and lunch on Monday for two different groups where in the conversation they're asking, where should we have this event? Where should we do this? Where should we send people if they wanna you know, do all of these things? And our team knows all of these businesses. And um, that is also incredibly important. We've, in the past um, three years, really placed an emphasis on making sure that we're attracting businesses that don't just, again, fall within the traditional tourist areas. And we've got special pricing so we can bring those diverse owned businesses into Visit Milwaukee so they can benefit from it. Nice. So you mentioned the Baird Center. Mm -hmm. So how important is that to what you do for tourism? The expansion is, of the... Uh, it, is, it is the absolute game changer. When the convention center was built in 1998, it was built as phase one. Phase two happened about five years later. Phase three was slated to happen much sooner than it is. And that Marty and his team were able to get it approved during the first pandemic in over a century was absolutely a game changer. It was approved in 2021, in April, during a pandemic when there was no business taking place. Well, we had some, we were fortunate that we had a lot of youth sports that was taking place that kept some of our um, businesses up and able to function because they would be able to eat at dis you know, social distancing. Um, but this is gonna be a game changer. 300,000 square feet of exhibit space is um, the baseline for big cities in order to be considered for some of these larger conventions. So this is really going to help us as we move forward. That coupled with the RNC announcement and the DNC, we've seen leads double. So what, after we announced RNC, our leads doubled. This, this year alone, Leslie, our Vice President of Sales said in our all staff meeting this morning that last year we had 92 leads from January 1st through January 26th, we're already at 117. Wow. So we're outpacing last year, which was double the year before. Wow. So maybe you don't know this, um, but what's the biggest conference that comes to Milwaukee? Well, I mean, so there's as conferences people, and events, or right? Events. Let's do there's events. conferences and events. So the RNC is going to be 45,000 people. Harley Davidson every five years brings in about 110,000 people. So that's leisure. It doesn't come, the, the blocks don't come through us. These are people making reservations on their own um, to come to an event that's taking place here. Summerfest brings people from all over the world. Last year, 640,000 people. Um, some of the bigger events that we're excited about are the ones that fall over need dates. So as I'm sure you can all imagine, as people who have families who travel, Thanksgiving weekend. That's a family weekend. It's not like people are staying in a lot of hotels. Our team booked a group of Midwest Irish dance teachers over Thanksgiving for 25 and 26. 6,000 rooms each of those years, which will fill a good portion of our bigger hotels, which will then draft, which will cause compression for our other hotels. Yeah. So it's really not just booking groups, it's finding the right groups that fit into the right spots to create the biggest economic impact for the community. We know that we sell out Memorial Day to Labor Day, right? There's no better place to be in the world than the summer in Milwaukee. So that's not where we need, right? Exactly, yeah. yes. Yeah. But that's where we need the help is those off times. You know, you looked outside two weeks ago when the, it wasn't the polar vortex exactly, we had a couple site tours, it was below zero, it was pretty chilly. <laughs> You're like, hmm, maybe not Milwaukee in February, but that's what our job is, is to sell them on why Milwaukee in February. February. Mm -hmm. You have to answer me this, because I still, to this day, drive down by the lake and freak out every time I see these giant cruise ships. I on know. Next. How did that happen? So it's- And who's taking these trips? That's what I want to know. Really rich yeah. people. Try yeah. and look one up. Look up a Viking cruise, and you will see that you have to be very rich. I cannot afford to go on one of these trips. Um, they are, so when I started, one of my first meetings was with then um, cruise director, and I know you've had Jackie on, her yep. predecessor, Adam Tindall Schlicht. He, someone said on my team, you need to meet with him. We are, we're, we're going to take off in terms of cruising. And I'm like, what, what? I've lived here my entire life. I'm like, what? No, no, this, this can't be a thing. And I met with Adam and he said, there's gonna be an announcement in February in Orlando that Viking is building two ships, two ships to cruise the Great Lakes 
and they want Milwaukee to be one of their turnaround ports. And I was like, oh, oh my goodness. Now, in February of 2020, talk of COVID is starting to happen. Adam goes. They announced they're building these two cruise ships. In 2019, I want to say we had five cruises that came through Milwaukee. Ponant, which is out of um, France. Hamburg, which is a German cruise ship. A few others. They were smaller ships that could dock at Discovery World. The announcement happens. There's a lot of press, but not a lot of press because the COVID press is happening. We were going to ramp up. So in 2020, I think we were slated to do 12 cruise ships. Then we were going to go to 20. And then by 2022, it was going to be 30. And Viking was supposed to launch in 21, I think. 22, 22. Um, that's what would have made that big increase. So we forget about it, right? There's no cruises. I mean, who wants to be on a cruise in a ship. capsule yeah. during COVID, right? I went on a cruise in February of 2020 with my family. It was kind of our thing and, and got back, got sick, probably had COVID, probably you know, passed it around to all of our coworkers. But anyway, so we didn't think about it. When we opened cruises back in 2022, it was 33 cruise ships. So we went from five to 33, like overnight with no practice. No practice. So Jackie and her team are absolutely incredibly fantastic. How they made that happen, the Viking cruise ships are beautiful. Octantis la launched in 22, Polaris launched in 23. I've had an opportunity to, to go on them. So I've been on cruise ships, Royal Caribbean, Carnival Cruise. Like the whole room is as big as the judge and I together. You can actually, like the shower, you could bend over in. I mean, they are beautiful <laughs> cruise ships, high-end food. Um, the first cruise ship that came in this year was a 360-day cruise from Antarctica. Wow. That ended in Milwaukee. Wow. <laughs> I'm telling you, our team is there to greet every single cruise ship that comes in. They have said that they can't believe it. It doesn't happen in any other port they're in. We've got Eric, who's one of our longtime volunteers, playing the accordion, welcoming <laughs> guests as they get off the ships. We hand them visit Milwaukee pins and official visitors guides with little sheets. They, you know, um, Teresa Nemitz, I don't know if you know who she mm -hmm. is. She's an incredible entrepreneur. She started her career in nonprofits, opened this tour business, Milwaukee City and Food Tours, and she has grown it into uh, Milwaukee uh, excursions and she yeah. does 90 percent of the excursions not just here she has grown her business to over 25 million dollars and she is thought of as an industry expert on the cruise business I mean that's what tourism does yeah. it allows for opportunities that weren't here before yeah. she was mailing fudge over Christmas right that's that was right. her COVID. How, right. that was her COVID right. thing this is I mean these excursions she went from like 20 people, she employs over 200 full-time people now during the summer because wow. that's when the cruises happen. It's amazing. Now, so when cruises come, um, there's, who are these other, who's doing all this? The Are these just volunteers who are picking people up, driving them places so the, the, for the excursions? The excursions is all done through Milwaukee. All through, okay. And because these are high-end cruises, 98% of them do excursions. Okay. So there are, but there are people, so we're a turnaround port, which means that if you are coming to Milwaukee and leaving out of Milwaukee, you stay overnight. So if you've ever been to a cruise, so my in-laws live in Florida, so the cruise that we would usually go on with them would go out of um, this small town in Florida that had nothing. Literally, it's all ships. There is no culture, there is no nightlife. You are staying in a hotel because you have to be at the dock by 6 a.m. They're coming here. And they are staying overnight in one of our beautiful hotels and then getting to experience our amazing city before they get on the cruise ship and fly and you head know to cruise around. Right, and head to Duluth, yeah. They go to <laughs> they go to Duluth too. But Duluth is underrated, I will tell you. No, no, you, Duluth is underrated. Duluth is yeah, a pretty is. amazing as well. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Right? yeah, it's amazing, right? They've picked some great cities and this helps make the city better. It really does. All of these things coming into play. Again, why I say it's not us, we just get to tell the stories. And then you have to remember that each of you, when you post something negative or positive about Milwaukee, the world is watching. 
It really is. And I think that that's been one of the big turnarounds for our city is that people are speaking well about our city. It's not as often that I'm seeing all of the ne negativity. Yeah, there's still issues and we need to work on those issues, but you're seeing much more positive as we go through this. As we, as I, I see it all the time, we subscribed to a, um, a social media scraping company for a little while. It went out of business. We're trying to find a new one called TSI. So they scrape every social media site plus all media to see what people are saying about your destination, good and bad. And we could see the positivity after the National Geographic um, announcement, after the RNC announcement, all of those things help play into it. So we've talked for the mass majority of the time about all this good mm -hmm. and everything is good. Um, but what worries you about the tourism industry here? What keeps you up at night? Well, I think that any time that a funding is always something that makes you nervous. I think that we, you know, we do really well with what we have. I have a very supportive board. I have a board member here who also works for Marquette and Kate. They allow me to, to operate at a deficit for the last three years, which is not usual when you have right. a board of directors, but they know it's important to put money in to get money back to the community. So um, I, I get nervous because there are municipalities, you'd heard me talk about Visit Orlando at first, 15 million cut out of their budget. There are um, destinations, Duluth is one. They stopped giving money to their tourism agency. They, they didn't think it was worth it. Um, for a while, Florida said, you know what, we don't need to market, and they were wrong, right? You do yeah. need to market. If you're not telling people, I mean, none of you in your business would, you know, if I had, if I had $500 in my pocket right now that I was going to give away, but I didn't tell any of you I was going to give it away, what would I have when I left? $500 yeah. in my pocket. We need to talk about Milwaukee. So funding is important, and it's always, it's always a little nerve-wracking but you know what I drink so I fall asleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> All right so, so um, I like to end uh, these get to know sessions with my fast five okay so I'm gonna ask you fa five questions you just respond as fast as you can as okay. answers those questions. Just really quick you can't ask me what my favorite anything is? No. Okay because we have no. many There's partners. no favorite. Okay good. All right. Oh no there's one favorite but that's not Okay. What do you think? All right, all right. Okay. All right, here we go. First question. Cheese curds, fried or fresh? Fried. Water fountain or bubbler? Bubbler. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who would like to see you win a title first, Brewers or Bucks? Who what? Win a title next, Brewers or Bucks? Bucks. Okay. Uh, favorite custard flavor? Vanilla. Okay. Really? Yeah, there is no other flavor. Butter pecan? Oh, man, I love butter pecan. They all have a base of vanilla. Yeah, they all have the base right. of vanilla. You're right. All right, you win on that one. <laughs> have you ever been to cops? <laughs> Last question. This is, I don't even know why I have to ask this one. Eat out or cook? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Eat out. <laughs> we don't cook in my house. <laughs> all right. So at this point, I'm going to open it up for questions. Does anyone have any questions? Um, uh, I'll have Hillary has the. I'll go to you next. Okay. Start here. <coughs> uh, Peggy, does Visit Milwaukee partner with or interact with either the Greater Milwaukee Committee or the Metropolitan Association of Commerce, or are those two organizations focused different? We partner. Um, we are strong believers in collaboration, and all of us collaborating together makes everything better, so we do on a regular basis. Um, you know, our, m the people who work with me, they speak with their counterparts probably on a daily basis. Good afternoon. Um, the last time I saw you, you were receiving your Jackins Award. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> early, uh, late last year so congratulations on that but um, my you. name is Natalie and I work for Milwaukee Radio Group and who do I talk to to get you on all five radio stations to share all of what you just shared about <laughs> the city of Milwaukee. You to Claire in the back. Claire? <laughs> all right and Claire I'm coming Milwaukee to see radio you. Radio Group. I've known Bill Hurwitz forever. We actually put the radio Broadcast, Wisconsin Broadcasters Hall of Fame in the Hilton when I was still with Marcus because Bill was the head of the organization back then. Awesome. Well, and Willie Davis. I know Willie yes. Davis as well. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So I'll be speaking to you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jeannie. Um, so oh, we, want, we gotta get you the mic. We got someone right behind you, real quick. Yep. Oh. Hello, my name is Benjamin Jackson. Hi. Um, I'm at, um, I, just, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to, uh, just to let you know, Peggy, uh, it, whenever you get the chance, tell Ina Lee and Alex Zimdar that they're doing an amazing job. Oh, with thank you. I certainly will. They're, both of their bosses are here right now. <laughs> <laughs> Jeannie and I did one of the first conferences together. So back in the day. 1999. 1999. She was brand new, had never planned a conference, and we were working on the Howard Fuller event. It was called BAO. Yes, the yes. Black Alliance for Educational, Educational Options. Energy. Exactly. Yep. Yes. That was one of my first full conferences that I did yes. with and Jean. you. Mm -hmm. You did a great job. So, th And thank you both. Um, Peggy, really appreciate this. I do not mean to be a Debbie Downer. I'm interested in, um, you know, uh, Judge Mosley asked you about what keeps you up at night. What are you worried about? And I've just heard this, that when conferences come to town, especially a big one like the RNC, um, that the crime and sex trafficking and things like that, can you speak a, a little bit to that and what we can do as citizens to keep an eye out and keep our sure. city safe? And So yeah. the, big four, the big four always do. Sex trafficking goes up any time. The big four are the um, Super Bowl, the RNC, the DNC, as well as the um, inauguration. Um, I know that there's a plan in place. We have great people who are working on the things that we need to do to prevent that. But I think it's if you see something, say something, because that's going to be incredibly important for any, any time frame, right? We are, um, unfortunately, in the top of sex trafficking. So it's something that I know that the Greater Milwaukee Hotel Lodging Association and the WHLA work with on a regular basis to make sure they're educating the hotel teams to understand what to look for to make sure they can stop things when those when those things are happening. When you talk about um, crime, I mean, when we hosted the debate, we saw very little crime, very little anything during that time frame when they were here. So I think with the increased amount of security, I don't think crime goes up. I know that there's going to be protests. I have every faith that we'll work together to have peaceful protests in the areas that are reserved for those things. Um, so that's, that's, it's, that's not keeping me up at, at night right now because I have the trust in the security that we have here that will make things good. Thank you. Yes. I'm going to go on this side and then work my way over there. Okay. Hi, Peggy. I'm Jean. Um, could you speak a little bit about uh, your role with Top Chef or what oh, you expect? Oh, we didn't bring that up. Oh, my goodness. From, um, from that type of PR. So Top Chef is um, filmed here, if anyone doesn't know. They were here August through October. Um, I know I keep mentioning their names, but Claire and Josh were instrumental in bringing Top Chef to Milwaukee. They did scouting. What? Oh, no. Oh. So, can I just, mm -hmm. before you answer, can I ask Claire and Josh to stand? We've mentioned them like 92 <laughs> times. Could you please stand? All right. So, so this conversation started in 2020, like many conversations started. Paul Bartolotta came to us, or he actually went to the MMAC first, and then to the Department of Administration. It was Joel Brennan back then, so working with Joel on Greater Milwaukee Committee, and said, how do we get money to bring this together? I was so new at the time, I had no input to give. Pandemic happened, they didn't film that year. They tried to come back to us in 2021. We had the Ryder Cup. They, they, their filming dates were over the Ryder Cup and they couldn't even leave the city because the entire region was sold out mm -hmm. for the Ryder Cup. So they came back in 2022 and said, we want Milwaukee in 23, what, we, what can we do? Our team put together a list of 65 different places for them to scout, tour, do all of these things along with the state. Again, another collaboration, making sure that we were working in tandem. And it did, I mean, it cost us a pretty penny. We, my, the board allowed me to take $250,000 out of our marketing opportunity fund to help pay for them to be here. We are a state that doesn't have film tax credits. So in order to be able to help supplement them filming in the state of Wisconsin, there was an outlay of money. But it is going, there's a, gonna be a big announcement coming soon <laughs> and and the premiere will be announced so we'll have a huge party that will talk about all of the good things that we're going to be able to show during um, Top Chef season um, 21. Okay. This will be our last question. 
Chris. Hey there. Uh, my name's Another Chris. Another get-to-know uh, <laughs> guest, yes, Chris Corkery from great, 100 Great Acre. hearing from you. I was here last month. Um, this is live, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm new here, one year new from Brooklyn. So this had a uh, Milwaukee had a tall order to stand up against coming from there. Um, I'm curious, how do new small up and coming businesses end up on your radar and uh, sort of get promoted in the, the broader, you know, visit Milwaukee spectrum? Sure. Um, so we are always looking for businesses. We have a small but mighty partnership team who's out there. Our social media team is out there seeing what they're seeing on social media. So if someone has an active social media, they're looking at that. And then it's a collaboration between our communications, marketing, and partnership teams to come together to, um, if you know, we, we like to cover partner businesses, so we want you to become a partner, but we want you to understand the benefits of what being part of Visit Milwaukee has to offer. So it's really, that's why we do so much here. That's why I'm speaking to you today, right? Because in the past, the organization didn't do much locally, and we can't authentically sell the city if we're not out talking to you to find out what is authentically good about the city. So we're, that's why I'm here. You now know about us. We're going to have Josh come over and, and uh, talk to you. <laughs> talk about partnership after this. <laughs> All right. So before uh, we end and thank Peggy, I just want the program announcements. Um, so February 7th is our next event at the Lubar. It's the release of the new Marquette Law Poll. Yes. Um, it's it's, it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a doozy. Um, so uh, please uh, uh, register for that event February 13th. It's our get to know with Cecilia Gore. She's the executive director of the uh, Brewers Community, F Community Foundation. February 18th is our next Ethnic Heritage Dinner. It's our African American Dinner for uh, Black History Month. We will be featuring uh, African, Jamaican, and Cajun cuisine um, for that dinner. So please register for that as well. And um, on February 29th, the end of Black History Month, I will be giving my things your history teacher didn't teach you about black history lecture. <laughs> um, so hopefully you register for that as well. And we'll see you then. Can we give a round of applause to Peggy Williams Smith? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate it.